um, we'll make another attempt sometime in the future and we'll let you know as soon as we know that date. This live stream will be watching the live launch of Transporter 1 mission launched by SpaceX. It was the first dedicated ride shared mission. Some of the satellites in this mission are made by SpaceX, NanoRax, NanoAvionics, Exolaunch, and as I mentioned Tony earlier, Energy, today's launch is the Space first Flight, of SpaceX's dedicated Ohio, SmallSat rideshare program, NASA, which provides IPBS, small satellite operators etc. with competitive pricing. Uh, the, Falcon, the Falcon 9 booster B1058515, simply known as Block 5, will be used in this mission. This booster has flown four times. Its first flight was on May 30th, 2020 in in the mission SpaceX Demonstration Mission 2, which put Bob Benken and Doug Hurley into the ISS. This is the first time a private space company has flown humans to, into space. The launch location of this mission is Space Launch Complex 40, also known as SLC 40, from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Florida. This is the, ma the mass of the payload is 5,000 kilograms or 11. 11,000 pounds. This group of satellites will go into a 500 kilometer sun synchronous orbit or SSO. This will also be the first time SpaceX will be going into a polar orbit and will have a third stage known as Sherpa FX. Sherpa FX is a satellite dis dispenser designed by space, space flight. This booster will land on OCIS and Y. Of course, I still have a drone ship. There will be a fairing recovery outcome. Fairing will be recovered by Miss P and Miss Steve, which are the names of boats. And this will be the most satellite launched with 143 satellites. So now let's start. Let's go. Let's see the live stream. The 10 Starlink satellites launching aboard this mission will also be the first Starlink satellites deployed to a polar orbit. And many of the future Starlink sats flying to the pole orbit will actually launch from our Vandenberg site here in California. The Vandenberg team is, ha is hiring for a number of open positions to support our growing operations there. If you're interested in working on the launch team that will help all kinds of payloads launch from our West Coast facility, head over to spacex.com slash careers and apply. We are about three minutes from liftoff. Falcon 9 is moving into the final stages of the countdown. The payload and vehicle remain healthy, and we're still currently tracking weather to be green for a T0 liftoff at 10 a.m. Eastern. In about 30 seconds around the T minus two minute mark, we should finish liquid oxygen loading and that will wrap up the, the final propellant loading for Falcon 9. For those just joining us, this is the Transporter 1 mission for SpaceX, the third launch of 2021, and the first Space dedicated small set rideshare mission for SpaceX. And we just heard the call that lock, lock loading is completed. Again, that is the last of propellant loading for Falcon 9. And on screen, you can start to see some white clouds forming around Falcon 9. That is normal and expected for us at this stage in the countdown. That is uh, liquid oxygen condensing as it meets the warmer ambient temperatures of the Florida air. Falcon 9's in startup. 
and the vehicle is in startup. Both stages are beginning to pressurize for launch. In a few seconds here, we should be hearing the launch director give the final go for liftoff. LD on countdown one, go for launch. And there you heard it. That is the final go for launch at T minus 35 seconds. All systems are go for the Transporter 1 mission. Let's listen and watch in as we lift off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. And lift off. Two bolts pitching downrange. Stage one chamber pressure is nominal. We are T plus 43 seconds into flight. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower and is currently throttling down to prepare for max Q at around the T plus one minute and 12 second mark. Max Q is where the vehicle will experience the highest amount of aerodynamic pressures. Falcon, Falcon 9 is supersonic. Max Q. And we've just passed Max Q. That is a really cool tracking shot of Falcon 9. All is looking good with the Stage 1 trajectory. Uh, in about a minute, we have three events coming up in quick succession. First up is main engine cutoff. That's where the nine engines on the first stage will shut off, followed by stage separation, where the first and second stages will separate from one another. Uh, shortly after that, we'll have a second engine start one, the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite its engine and continue its journey into orbit. And vac engine chill has begun. We're about 20 seconds away from main engine cutoff, the start of those three events happening in rapid succession. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. Coming up in a few seconds, we should have the fairing deploy. In back ignition. Fairing separation confirmed. And there you can see the two fairing halves have separated and fallen away from the vehicle, exposing the 143 spacecraft to the vacuum of space. And as a reminder, our recovery vessel, Miss Chief, will be attempting to recover the fairing halves today from the water. We're at T plus three minutes and 30 seconds into flight. We have a couple of views on screen right now. Uh, on the right hand, uh, right hand side is a view of the second stage, specifically the uh, MVAC engine. It's currently in the first of its two MVAC burns. This burn should last for about another five minutes or so. And on the left hand side of your screen is a view from the top of our first stage looking down. The next milestone for the first stage will be its, its re-entry burn. 
Uh, Falcon 9 needs to execute and entrepreneur to slow itself down before hitting the dense parts of the atmosphere. Uh, without this burn, relying on the atmosphere alone to slow Falcon 9 down will put an unnecessary strain on the rocket. And that entry burn is coming up at around the T plus 7 minute and 47 minute mark, just a few minutes from now. For those just joining us, this is the TranspaceX, uh, the first dedicated SmallSat rideshare program mission, and it's also the third mission of 2021. We're just waiting on the next major event for this mission, which is the first stage entry burn that's going to be happening around the T plus 7 minute and 47 mark. You can see some periodic bursts of gas from the first stage. That is nitrogen from our attitude, attitude control systems. They help to orient the first stage as it continues to make its descent back towards Earth. And as, as we get closer to uh, the Earth, you'll start to notice those honeycomb-like structures on the left-hand side of your screen start to move and pivot. Those are, are, are our hypersonic grid fins, and those help to steer the first stage back um, as it uh, returns back to Earth. As for the second stage, impact performance looks nominal. Just a few seconds after we finish the stage one entry burn, we'll be shutting off the second stage Merlin vacuum engine and enter a small coast phase. Again, we'll need to relight this engine later on in the mission to get to our eventual destination in orbit. Stage one FTS is saved. We are about 45 seconds away from that stage one entry burn. Uh, for the entry burn, it is a three engine burn. So three of the nine Merlin engines on the first stage will relight and start to slow the stage down before it hits the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one entry burn startup. And there's the entry burn. Three of the nine Merlin engines have relit. This burn is expected to last for about 30 seconds. Second stage in terminal guidance. Stage one entry burn shut down. And you can see on screen the entry burn has concluded. And in just a few seconds, we should be here on the call up for a second engine cutoff, where we'll shut down the second stage M back engine. FDS is saved. There's the second stage. Also signal stage one came back. The second stage has shut down its engine.
Now, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to be attempting to recover the booster for a fifth time. Nominal parking orbit on our, insertion. On our drone ship, of course, I still love you. That first stage has one more burn left, the landing burn, and it, it begins just before we touch down and provides the booster with a soft descent before we land. That stage should be starting up burn. anytime now. And we did get confirmation of the second stage that it did reach a good parking orbit. Stage one landing leg deploy. LOS stage two, Cape Canaveral expected. And Falcon 9 returns safely once again. That is the fifth time for this particular booster and the 73rd recovery of an orbital class rocket. A great way to start off the mission and a great way to start off the Sunday. We're now going to coast for the next 45 minutes or so while we wait for SES-2 or second engine start number two. We're going to leave you with an animation that shows you where we're at in the coast phase, and we'll see you back here at the T-plus 54-minute mark.
LZ Walker Falcon has landed. Lighting operators moving to proceed. The rocket down as gently as possible at the pad at LZ1. Landing burn has begun. On the left-hand side, you can see the uh, first stage approaching the pad. And on the right-hand side, you see the pad shot. Let's watch it land. Meanwhile, we are in a good orbit. Dragon is in a good orbit. Getting ready for uh, deployment. Should have just happened. Hopefully, we'll have some video footage for you in a few moments of uh, the Dragon separating from the second stage. Uh, but right now, keep your eye on that amazing shot of the drone ship with the first stage recovered. Uh, going forward, we are going to be securing that first stage on the drone ship.
Welcome to the rocket profile of the Falcon 9, the rocket that started the reusability race. The current version of the Falcon 9, version 1.2, has a first stage consisting of nine Merlin 1D engines, burning kerosene and oxygen, each with a vacuum thrust of 914 kilonewtons of 311 seconds. Version 1.0 of the Falcon 9 had the Merlin 1C engine, with only 480 kilonewtons and 304.8 seconds of vacuum ISP, and the engines have been in a continual state of improvement since. To keep costs low, SpaceX started with a simple engine with a fairly low chamber pressure, 982 PSI, and gradually improved it to the current 1410 PSI. All versions of the Falcon 9 have a 3.66 meter diameter, but the tanks increased in length between the versions. The main point of the first stage is, of course, that it's meant to be reusable, returning to landing at the launch site when the payload is small and landing on a barge with a heavier payload or payloads destined for geostationary transfer order. On this launch, the Falcon 9 is being tested with its maximum payload, 22.8 tons, and doesn't have enough reserve fuel to land the first stage. Typical burn time for the first stage is 2 minutes and 42 seconds, but the engines can throttle and will also shut down early if aiming for recovery. The key to the recoverability of the first stage is actually the design of the second stage, which consists of a single Merlin 1D adapted for vacuum operation. The most obvious adaptation is the long nozzle, which allows it to get 348 seconds vacuum ISP, over 10% more than the first stage Merlin 1Ds. It also manages a bit more thrust, 934 kN, and burns for around 6 minutes and 37 seconds depending on throttling. Falcon 9's payload capacity is often compared to an Atlas V or Delta IV, so it's striking that the second stage engine outputs about 8 times more thrust than the second stage of either of those rockets. The difference in fuel and efficiency is a minor factor. The main reason is that the Falcon 9 second stage is responsible for the vast majority of the Delta V to get to orbit and almost all of the horizontal velocity. The first stage mainly serves to boost the second stage above the denser parts of the atmosphere so that the vacuum engine can do its thing. Like the second stage of the Atlas V and the Delta IV, the second stage of the Falcon 9 can restart and will do so to put payloads into geostationary transfer orbit and also to deorbit itself to prevent extra space jump. While the space shuttle was an early attempt at reusability, it failed to drive down launch costs or pioneer an era of space innovation. Falcon 9 has already succeeded in doing both, thanks to the fact that it is a cheap, straightforward launcher even without reusability. With that, thank you for watching this rocket profile of the Falcon 9. You're looking at a live view of the Falcon 9 rocket as it prepares to launch at 12.45 p.m. Eastern Time from Historic Pad 39A and Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Good afternoon and welcome to the webcast of SpaceX's CRS-12 mission uh, to launch to resupply the International Space Station. My name is Tom Perdario and I'm a firmware engineer in the avionics department here at SpaceX. Now today's mission will mark the final new Cargo Dragon spacecraft to visit the ISS with all future CRS launches SpaceX to be conducted with reused Dragon spacecraft. Now on board Dragon today are 6,000 pounds of cargo, including food, crew provisions, medical supplies, fuel, and air for the station, 
as well as a number of research experiments, which we'll talk about more during the webcast, or later on during the webcast. Uh, also today, after the Falcon 9 drops that Dragon spacecraft into orbit, the first stage will be uh, attempting to land at our LZ-1 landing zone back at Cape Canaveral, just a few miles south of Kennedy Space Center, where we're watching from today. On your screen, you can see a beautiful shot of Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Let's take a look at exactly what you can see on your screen right now. Uh, at the center of the screen is the Falcon 9 rocket. Uh, this rocket is comprised of two main stages. That bottom two-thirds of the rocket or so is the first stage. rocket, that nose cone looking thing at the very top, that is the Dragon and its trunk. That Dragon is currently loaded with about 6,000 pounds of supplies and experiments for the ISS. Uh, in the back of the, of the view, you can see the uh, fixed surface structure and rotating structure. These are left over from the shuttle era of this pad. Uh, mind you, today is an instantaneous launch window, so if we don't get a chance to launch at exactly 12.45 p.m. today, we will be having to attempt again on another day. Just a small correction, that is a liftoff at 12.31 p.m. Eastern Time today. <clears throat> now here at SpaceX, we conduct our go, no-go poll of the rocket at about T minus 78 minutes. This is when the launch director pulls all of the launch teams and makes sure that all systems in the rocket are good to go for a launch. So at T minus 78 minute poll and all systems are go for launch. Uh, we started loading liquid uh, rocket, or sorry, RP-1 fuel, that is our liquid kerosene fuel, into the rocket at about T-70 minutes, and then started loading our oxidizer liquid oxygen at about T-45 minutes. We're just about P-1 and liquid oxygen, and we'll be full uh, topped off at about T-5 and T-3 minutes, respectively. All in all, that is 1 million pounds total of rocket fuel and liquid oxygen. Our liquid helium pressurant uh, started loading at about T minus 23 minutes, so we're almost done with that. Uh, engine chill just started, or is just about to start at T minus 10 minutes. This is when we flush those engines with liquid oxygen and get them ready uh, to receive their cryogenic propellants. Uh, right now, weather is looking fantastic, as you can see on the camera. Uh, we monitor a few uh, weather conditions here for launch. One of them is anvil clouds and lightning. Obviously, those look uh, pretty good right now. Uh, no, no lightning in sight at the Cape. Uh, other things that we monitor are low-level winds and upper-altitude winds. Uh, both of those are looking fantastic. We just had a report back from the uh, launch, from the weather balloons that we launch about every 30 minutes, and upper-altitude winds are looking pretty great. So with the Falcon 9 getting ready to launch, let's talk about what's on board the Dragon today. 
Uh, in addition to the food, water, and provisions for the crew, there's also a bunch of very interesting science experiments going up today. Uh, one of which is an augmented reality system to help the crew better organize their tasks and equipment storage on board the station. There's also a circadian rhythm experiment that seems to allow scientists to observe how the crew reacts to the rapid changes in the day and night cycles on board the station. In terms of scientific equipment, uh, today the Dragon is bringing up what's called the Cosmic Ray Energetics and Mass Experiment, or CREAM. This is a highly sensitive cosmic ray energy detector uh, for measuring the cosmic ray backgrounds of outer space. Uh, we also have a protein crystallization experiment, which is designed to observe protein behaviors in microgravity that causes Parkinson's disease. Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video, I explore sort of happens if we scale up the Falcon 9 rocket and replace the Merlin engines with being up to what happens, complicated developments that I have in mind. Uh, in particular, what happens if we replace the upper stage with more of a starship thing? And, you know, maybe it wouldn't look exactly like starship. Maybe it'll be more like a lifting body plane i don't know uh, we could explore various possibilities with that and you know what kind of performance would it get but first we're just going to do a basic payload capacity test this is non-reusable first and then we'll try reusable and i've shaped it pretty much exactly like a falcon 9 the fairing is actually probably a little bit thinner uh, we are at 5.2 meters i've made it thin and long uh, we could make it shorter and stubbier like more like um star uh, starship super heavy sort of deal but i kept it like this and we're aiming for 57 tons to orbit non-reusable so let's take it outside and see if we can do that much and then we'll see about other numbers it's about twice the mass of a falcon 9 and that's because of the thrust of the engines right now these are the current state of raptor engines as far as i know so this would be a lower bound if they operate the engines that will improve. Uh, so they'll will need a bigger rocket, and then we would also be able to lift more with it. But as it is, its capacity should be more than a Falcon Heavy. But we'll Grammarly does more. We'll see. Okay, so there it is in all of its glory. I'll just manually launch it this time. and But the KOS script will handle it for the reusable one since it's configured to shut down the engines appropriately as it would on the Falcon 9. So SAS on. It's actually a little bit shorter than I thought it would be. Anyway, ignition. launch we can't really make it any thinner though and that's because we wouldn't be able to fit the niner so there's the thinnest it can be while fitting all nine engines at the bottom of course our engine models might be a little bit generous on the nozzles i don't know So yeah, I don't know if there's some sort of semi-official name or fan name for a Raptor 9 kind of rocket. I'm definitely not interested in sticking with the name Raptor 9, so if you have suggestions, please offer them. Well, we should be through Max-Q and everything. I should have mentioned the tanks. I tried for...
Done that with Adam's clear. Go for lunch. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition, lift off. Separation confirmed. And back ignition.
Dragon, separation confirmed. Welcome back to the Transporter 1 mission. If you're just joining us, Falcon 9 lifted off at 10 a.m. Eastern from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, had successful stage separation, we landed our first stage on our drone ship for the fifth time, and successfully completed our first second stage burn. On screen right now is a view of the second stage MVAC engine. We are waiting to relight that engine for the second and the final burn. Uh, this burn will be a quick one, lasting only two seconds. And we're expecting that burn to start uh, in just a few seconds here. And if we don't have footage of it, we should be able to get confirmation over the, the nets. And there is Second engine start off, uh, start up, and then cut off. Now we're waiting for confirmation of a good orbit on that second stage. Nominal payload orbit insertion. And there's the call out that we want. Uh, that is a confirmation of a good orbit. Next up will be the deployment of our 100.
we created this program to provide small satellite operators with regularly scheduled rides on board Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and in the not too distant future, Starship as well. These missions offer competitive pricing to our customers as well as an increase of, uh, as well as increased flight opportunities and flexibility. As part of this program, we're also offering traditional rideshare opportunities on existing low Earth orbit missions and on SpaceX's Starlink missions, which provide launch opportunities about once a month. The first of those deployments should be happening around the T plus 58 minute and 30 second mark. There's a view of the Transporter 1 payload containing all 143 spacecraft. For today's ride shares, there are 11 ports on our payload, payload, payload adapter responsible for sending 133 spacecraft plus our 10 Starlink satellites uh, into orbit. Some of these ports will have multiple deployments. Uh, for these, over the countdown nets, we'll hear callouts for when the deployment sequence has begun and another callout for when the deployment sequence has completed. There are also then a handful of ports that will deploy only once, and we'll try to let you know who the customer is for each deployment, along with how many spacecraft are being sent into space. We're just over a minute away from the first set of deployments. Due to the nature of the payload stack, we will not have visuals for every deployment, but we do hope to catch most of them with our two camera views. It's also worth noting that uh, we will lose access to ground station coverage for a short period during the 18 minute deployment sequence. And when we, when we reach that point, we'll let you know uh, over the webcast. First up, the deployment sequences for port C4 and C1 will be initiated at the T plus 58 minute and 30 second mark. On port C4, there are 36 planet super doves, and then there are 17 spacecraft aboard Kepler's port on port C1. And we're hoping to get or C4 and C1 deployment sequences initiated. Those call outs. The deployment sequence has started for 36 of Planet Super Doves on port C4, as well as the 17 spacecraft aboard Kepler's port on C1. Uh, we're expecting these deployments to conclude about 11 minutes from now. Uh, in just a few seconds, we should be starting up the deployment for our customer Maverick, which contains three CubeSats for NASA's small spacecraft technology programs, VR3X mission. It's going to be deploying from the aft end fuel dome, which essentially is a small platform mounted on the back end of the second stage fuel dome right above the MVAC engine. Aft end payload deployed. And there you heard the call outs. Three CubeSats aboard Maverick's Mercury dispenser have deployed. These are for NASA's small spacecraft technologies program VR3X mission. The next call out will be to start deployment sequence for our customer NanoRacks around the T plus one hour and eight minute mark. And while we wait for this deployment sequence to begin, we're going to leave you with views of the deployments for Planet and Kepler. And we'll see you back here at the T plus one hour and seven minute mark.
Also signal reef, expected. Welcome back to the webcast for Transporter 1, SpaceX's first dedicated SmallSat rideshare program mission. On board this mission are 143 spacecraft, the most spacecraft ever deployed on a single mission. Uh, if you're just joining us, Falcon 9 had an on-time liftoff at 10 a.m. Eastern from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. It followed a nominal trajectory after liftoff. The first stage landed for the fifth time on our drone ship, of course I still love you, and our second stage had two successful engine burns. So far, the deployment sequence has begun for 36 of planet's CubeSats, as well as the 17 spacecraft aboard Kepler support. If you're looking closely at the left half of your screen, you should see them in the background uh, being deployed from the payload. Uh, we're expecting those to be completed around the T plus one hour and nine minute mark. We've also deployed three CubeSats for our customer Maverick. 
We're now waiting to hear that the deployment sequence has started from port C3 for the nine spacecraft for NanoRack's Ear Ease 1 mission. And while we're waiting for that call out, uh, the white dot on the left hand side of the screen, that is the moon. It's a pretty cool shots of uh, the moon there. And there goes another satellite. Again, we're waiting for um, confirmation from the team for the nine spacecraft for NanoRacks ear sequence initiated. Ease one mission. And there is the confirmation uh, for the nine spacecraft. Uh, we're expecting to get confirmation that these have completed deployment in about eight minutes from now, once we pass through our ground station blackout period. So stay tuned for that. Also signal Bangalore as expected. Next up, we're Port expecting C4, to get C1 the confirmation C1 that the 36 of Planet's Super Doves have deployed, as well as the 17 spacecraft aboard Kepler's port. And uh, we did get that call out. So far, we've successfully deployed 56 of our 133 SmallSat rideshares today. Nine spacecrafts have started their, their deployment sequence and should wrap up in the next few minutes, leaving another 68 still yet to be initiated. We've now entered that blackout period I mentioned earlier, which means we lose camera views and telemetry. During this time, we are expecting quite a bit of activity, but we won't get confirmation of successful deployments until we regain ground station connectivity around the T plus one hour and 15 minute mark. Uh, here's a preview of what will be happening until uh, we regain that connectivity. Nine spacecraft for NanoRacks will complete their deployment sequence. Uh, the first of two ports for our customer ExoLaunch will start and then finish deploying from port B3. Their second port, B2, will also begin its deploy sequence, but won't be completed until approximately T plus one hour and 16 minutes. ExoLaunch has a total of 30 spacecraft on today's mission. From there, two spacecraft will deploy for our customer Capella from two separate ports. And lastly, Spaceflight Incorporated customer IQPS's satellite will also separate. And while we wait to regain access to ground station coverage in a few minutes, sit back and follow along with our animation that shows you where we're at in the mission. We'll see you back here at the T plus one hour and 15 minute mark.
three small sats for commercial and government customers. We're expecting to reconnect with the ground station in just a few seconds, and we should be hearing calls for the deployments um, that we didn't see, and these calls should be happening back to back once we reconnect. Uh, during this blackout period, we also were able to recover both fairing halves, um, and they are safely on board our ships. And the callouts for the satellites should be happening around the T plus one hour and one hour, 15 minutes and 50 second mark. Acquisition of signal Cordova. Deployment is confirmed on ports C3, B3, C5, B1, and C6. Port B2 deployment sequence initiated and confirmed. So we did get co some confirmations. We should have some more callouts happening in just a few seconds here, and I'll summarize once all the callouts are done. Port A4 deployment confirmed. Port A2 deployment confirmed. Port B2 deployment sequence complete. Um, it sounds like we've gotten all, I'm going to go ahead and recap all the different ports. So from port C3, the Nanorax Ear Ease 1 Missions 9 payloads have deployed. From port B3 and B2, the Exoport 1 spacecraft deployed with two ice eye radar imaging satellites aboard. And Exoport 2 with 28 spacecraft from the DLR ice eye nano avionics swarm and TU Dresden began its deployment. From port C5 and C6, deployed one small sat each for our customer Capella. From port B1, the Spaceflight Incorporated customer's IQPS satellite has also deployed. And from port A4, SpaceX, uh, Space Flight Incorporated's Sherpa FX1 spacecraft has deployed with its 13 spacecraft on board. From port B2, the final small sats for Exo Launch have now deployed, making for a total of 30 on today's mission. And from port a2 D orbits pulse mission with its 20 spacecraft on board has also deployed. Uh, and that will conclude the rideshare portion of the mission. With these deployments behind us, we are now going to enter another short coast, fit coast phase before deploying our 10 Starlink satellites. So sit tight, enjoy the music, and we'll be back at the T plus one hour and 30 minute mark. We'll see you then.
acquisition signal, I'll go.
Signal, Welcome back to the webcast for SpaceX's Transporter 1 mission. If you're just joining us, we are close to the end of today's mission, which launched this morning from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida at 10 a.m. Eastern. We then had two successful ignition ignitions and shutdown of the second stage Merlin vacuum engine, then successful deployment of our 133 spacecraft for our commercial and government customers. We were also able to successfully recover our first stage for a fifth time on our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, and recover both fairing halves from the water. Coming up, we'll have the deployment of our 10 Starlink satellites. It's gonna be the first set of Starlink satellites deployed to a polar orbit, and that should be happening in about 30 seconds. And there's a view of the second stage. That right there is a view of the Starlink satellites to the right-hand side. Uh, pretty awesome. Uh, with that said, that will be bringing our webcast to an end. We would like to thank all of our rideshare customers for their set of Starlink satellites deployed to a polar orbit, and that should be happening in about 30 seconds. If we don't have views of the second stage, we should get confirmation. Twitter and Instagram profiles. And if you are excited about what you've seen today and want to join our team, visit spacex.com slash careers to learn more about working at SpaceX. Thank you to all of our viewers for your continued support and have a wonderful rest of the day. Wait, wait, wait.